everybody, this is Diana, aka Pop Culture Diva 42, and we reached the middle of the first season of Arrow, and it's time to look back and reflect on what we've learned so far. So far, we learned that the Hood Guy is a horrible name for a superhero. It's like almost as bad as the Blur. But I'm happy that at least in this final episode, like the mid-season finale this week, somebody finally said Green Arrow. And that's irony would have it. It was a bad guy. But then Ollie turned around and said that it's lame. Well, fuck you, Ollie. Pretender. But joking aside, I am... I hesitate to use the word impressed. But I guess I could. But impressed is probably a little more positive than I, what I want to go for regarding this show. I'm going to say that I am surprised that it doesn't completely suck. And it doesn't. You cannot say the arrow completely sucks. They are getting a lot of things right. Some of them by accident and some of them through competence. For instance, I do not hate the idea of Ollie having a family like I thought I would, except for the times when his sister is acting super bratty and super erratic. I actually kind of like her. Um, the mom has a shady dark past and the dad of the family basically just wants to uncover the truth about the fucked up family that he's part of. One thing that I hate and I've always hated is the romantic melodrama. Um, in the beginning I found it super annoying, like everything that was going on with Ollie and um, with Laurel, specifically because Laurel is a bipolar bitch that cannot make up her mind if she hates the guy or if she still likes him. But that was a problem mainly in the first couple of episodes since Laurel kind of more or less hooked up with Tommy Merlin. I am digging her character more. Specifically because she's not taking away from Ollie's main focus in life right now, which is fighting crime. Tommy Merlin was... Again, because he was attached to the whole idea of the romantic triangle, I really did not like him in the beginning. Plus, there was the looming threat that he might become evil at some point, so it's kind of hard for me to empathize with him uh, from that point of view. But since it turned out that he is not going to become the Dark Archer, at least not while he's, his dad is doing it, and he has been cut off from his dad, and now he, has, he is in the position where he has to prove himself, um, over the course of the show I just grew more and more to to really like accept Tommy Merlin for like the stereotype that he is. Regarding Oliver himself, um, I like the fact that he's a very driven character. That is something that lacked in Smallville, the fact that Clark really was not driven at all. He didn't he didn't seem to have the backbone to be Superman. But Oliver Queen, like this version of Oliver Queen, much like the, the version in Smallville, he really does know what he wants to do. He has a mission, he has a focus, he is competent, he's good at what he does, he gives people second chances. So I really like that about him. His lowest point for me were the Huntress episodes. The Huntress episodes were a low point because the evolution of his relationship with Huntress was horribly rushed. Um, it ended on a sour note and it basically said like you are willing to put aside your principles and your mission for pussy. What is interesting about um, Stephen Amell's, Amell's performance is that he's such a zen dude. Like he is so... Have you noticed how Oliver moves in this show? Like you know most of us when we have to turn our heads we go but not, not Amell. He's like doing the robot like 24-7 dude seriously like perk up and move like a human being the most surprising thing about Arrow for me is that I actually care about most of the secondary characters with the exception of Laurel and Tommy who at this point I'm just going to say that I can't st I can stand them whereas before I couldn't but I think most of Arrow's charm comes from the fact that it is a show about helping out the little guy and it is about standing up to huge corrupt individuals they seem to control everything and 
Also, it's not an overly violent show. It's not an overly flashy show. It's actually very subtle in what in some of the things it's trying to do. And I think that also ties into Amel's performance, which has a read as I might find it. Ultimately, he is not a big in your face kind of superhero. He's more of a subtle, you know, work behind the scenes sometimes superhero. Though honestly, like the last episode, he had an arrow from the Dark Archer and he took it to the Felicity Girl. And I'm like, what would the Felicity Girl know about fucking arrows, man? And then she's like, oh, it has a brand here and looks it up and blah blah blah. What kind of villain? brands his arrows or like uses branded arrows for everybody to know where he got them from. Yeah, those little escapes from logic are they're inherent to shows like this and you cannot take them too seriously but it was funny to see, you know, Oliver Queen, big shot superhero, huge technology guru. He's like, can you tell me where this is from? 